I think of this as the touch wood, fingers and toes crossed budget, because the whole thing is based on a guess about growth in the future, whether it's going to be weak or very weak. If you look at the OBR assessment, that's the most optimistic of all, and that gives Jeremy Hunt just enough room for slight increases this time round. By the way, I expect a much more generous giveaway budget of some kind in the autumn or possibly next spring. So this is a holding budget before the big budget ahead of the general election. Never, ever forget that. The Office for Budget Responsibility forecasts that because of changing international factors and the measures I take, the UK will not now enter a technical recession this year. With the OBR the most optimistic forecast, the Bank of England itself is the least optimistic and is really very grim indeed. So at this stage, we just don't know what the economic future the next 12 months, the next 18 months are going to feel like. We know they're going to feel very tough for working families because the OBR itself has said this is the toughest two-year squeeze on living standards since records began. And we know also that the overall taxation levels are the highest since the late 1940s, just after the Second World War and the Attlee government. That's a long, long time. A lot of Conservatives looking at this said this is not a Conservative budget. It's a very worrying anti-tax cutting budget. Certainly taxes are going to be higher and everyone is going to feel that. One optimistic thing from my point of view is that the Chancellor, Jeremy Hunt, has looked at the really serious problem we have around childcare in this country. In eligible households where all adults are working at least 16 hours, we will introduce 30 hours of free childcare, not just for three and four year olds, but for every single child over the age of nine months. I think he's looked at this not because he has young children of his own, though he does, or that he's gone particularly bleeding heart liberal because he's not that either. I think he's looked at the hard electoral calculations. Bridget Phillipson pointed out in a speech relatively recently to the onward centre right think tank that of the 100 key Tory Labour marginals around the country, almost everyone had about 25% of the voters connected to families with children below 11. In other words, these are the crucial demographic come to the election. No surprise that Labour focused on childcare as being its big pre-election issue, and no surprise that the Tories looked at this, thought for a moment, they, hold on a second, they're right, and have now done exactly the same thing. But I think this is quite good for democracy. This is politics working as it ought to work, because we have the two major parties now competing to see which can offer the best funded, most generous, most coherent, best thought through offer on childcare, something that we know the country desperately needs and that key demographic of voters very much want. I think this is good for politics. I will increase the pensions annual tax-free allowance from, by 50%, from 40,000 to 60,000. Some have also asked me to increase the lifetime allowance from its £1 million limit. But I've decided not to do that. Instead, I will go further and abolish the lifetime allowance. The announcement today is a huge giveaway to some of the very wealthiest. The only permanent tax cut in the budget is for the richest 1%. How can that possibly be a priority for this government? Jeremy Hunt's billion pound giveaway on pension thresholds is really badly targeted and probably politically badly judged. It does resolve the so-called doctor's tax question, where relatively highly paid NHS doctors have been retiring too early in their 50s because it's simply not worth staying on to get the extra pension. That is a real problem. But as Rachel Reeves for Labour has pointed out, you can resolve that problem with a specific scheme, as was done for judges. You don't need to give it to everybody in that tax bracket or with that amount of savings. And I think that allows Labour to say this is a budget which has focused on the pretty rich at the expense of ordinary working people. And so it gives Labour a very good attack line, and we're seeing that happening already, and it gives the Conservatives quite a lot of worry in the short term. 10% of companies will pay the full 25% rate. But even at 19%, our corporation tax did not incentivise investment. We will introduce a new policy of full capital expensing for the next three years. That means that every single pound a company invests in IT equipment, plant or machinery can be deducted in full and immediately from taxable profits. 
even after the Liz Truss fiasco, I think most Tories would say that growth in this country, very anemic at the moment, is a really, really central problem for the Treasury, for the Conservative Party and for the country. And that requires investment. And in that context, Jeremy Hunt's determination to press ahead with the long promised rise in corporation tax to 25% really worries a lot of Conservatives. It still leaves Britain towards the lower end of the scale for corporation tax, but it makes Britain clearly a less attractive place for many businesses to invest in. Now, Jeremy Hunt's answer to this in the budget was expensing, which means basically he writes off all the costs of investment. The so-called factory tax is the way that Conservatives talk about it. And so he's giving back with his right hand what he's taking with his left. But he is still taking about twice as much as he is giving back. So this is not going to be the really big break in terms of unleashing a great wave of investment in the British economy that Tories and many others might have hoped for. And indeed, because it's limited for, I think, three or four years and then it falls away again, it's not even a consistent or permanent change. So I think the question of whether, for business, Britain remains a relatively highly taxed and unattractive place to, to invest in is still moot after the budget. The best in investment incentives in Europe, the biggest ever employment package, for disabled people more help, for older people barriers removed, for families feeling the pinch, fuel duty frozen, beer duty cut, energy bills capped, and for parents, 30 hours of free childcare for all under fives. After 13 years of Tory sticking plaster politics, 13 years of no growth for the many, 13 years of being asked to pay, working people are entitled to ask, am I any better off than I was before? And after 13 years, with no excuses left, Nobody left to blame, no ambition or answers. The resounding answer is no, and they know it. I think in the autumn, or at the very latest next spring, Jeremy Hunt will come back with a bigger and more generous so-called giveaway package. The really interesting thing then is whether he decides to cut taxes on ordinary workers or whether he actually uses the money to resolve the huge problem of public sector pay. The strikes all around us at the moment. He's not going to do anything about that at all in the short term. This is not a budget for public sector workers, but he could perhaps later this year, early next year, come up with money to, to resolve some of those disputes. And I think the political question is, is it by then too late? Have we watched so much deterioration in the health service? Uh, have we watched so many uh, months and months and months of disruption in the railway system and elsewhere in public services that actually the country has made up its mind, turned its back? If you'd like to stay up to date and you'd like to see the latest explainers, field reports, feature stories and special discussion episodes, then please, folks, subscribe to our channel today.